Well, he's been he's been bailed out by his irrelevance now. I guess so. Like in yeah. a weird by way. The way. I own everything I did. Everything I did. Like what? I didn't use the N word. Let's be I'm, very I'm, clear. Some guy said the word <laughs> was bleeped out when Mrs. Shot March shot said. Mm -hmm. Well, he had therapy. <laughs> uh, serious people, if you're listening right now, go to Howard 101. I want to find that 1995 sketch where you use the N-word 70 times. What time will I get that today? Does anybody know? Can we play the Wendy Williams Can stuff on this serious yes. channel? Yes. Oh, let's do that. <laughs> we do. Let's do that, Steve. Here's something for you I serious. Hold on. Like hold on. For you serious people, you heard it once live. <laughs> I've been exclusive for you. <laughs> it's burning up the racist charts. Well, not even racist. Thing. Well, I don't know. Maybe. Who knows with Howard, right? I have no idea. He doesn't know. He never talks about it. I mean, we can play the old Pete Rose stuff. Here's too. what we'll do. We'll talk about Howard for Howard here. How's that? Because yes. Howard, I don't know. Well, Howard, you're on The View. When you're on The View, what did you say? I didn't use the N-word. Let's be I'm, very I'm, clear. Okay. I didn't hear that clip the other day on, on uh, Howard's show. It was not addressed. The pussy probably. that Stern has become. Uh, so... Do we have any proof that Stern ever used that word anywhere? When did the Pete Rose show air? I don't even remember. Uh, oh, it was like, was it? No, that had to be two weeks ago. Oh, I'm it wasn't just, last week. It was the week before. I'm just hearing about it now? Yeah. Some guy said the word was bleeped out when Mrs. Shot March Shot said mm -hmm. On the E show, it was bleeped out. These bleeps could be anything. Oh, hold on, hold on. So one second. Now, that words, those words weren't bleeped out. And again, we've talked about this on our show. We... Howard, you know, gave a pathetic whatever it was the other day. Not even an apology. Weird statement where he blamed it on the size of crowds at the inauguration that Trump is inflating, which is true. But who cares? It's four years ago and, and masks not being worn enough. Stern's lost his mind. And again, you can go to Howard yeah. 100, 101 to listen to what Stern used to be. No, no, that's not true. Go to Howard 100 to listen to what Stern is. And then go to Howard 101 to hear what Stern is six months ago. Yeah, now go he, to YouTube. Right. Now go to, to go to YouTube and really search, and you'll find out what Howard Stern was, which was the greatest broadcaster of all time. Uh, but anyway, so um, I, I didn't mean again. I'm sorry, Steve. Go ahead, continue. And someone wrote me on the same show. They let and go out on the air. Was given special protection. Well, hold on, wait a second. Wait a second. Go back to the view. I, I'm, I'm confused. I didn't use the N word. Let's okay, be very just clear. so the listeners Never. know, the bleep word is in fact. The N word. A couple of times it's bleeped for other. Uh, I am the I am the bleeper. I can confirm right. that yes. ninety percent of these are the N word. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. So I mean, he would yes, he would use it frequently, which we've discussed the other day. But I just thought the serious fans who you know got Stern to talk about the other day how he had Daniel Carver. It's just just babbling bullshit yeah. to let them know. And you're right, Mike. Wendy Williams. He went after Wendy Williams and serious, which I thought Stern left terrestrial radio so he could have freedom. And say what he wants. Well, I guess he can because he took it down himself, right? Steve yeah, it's shimmy looking broad. Here he is talking about Wendy Williams from last year, which got immediately scrubbed from serious and exclusive for you serious listeners, especially these subscribers because of us. Here's a little audio you, you haven't heard since then. I've gone Hollywood. It'd be about, you know, oh, I love this one. And then we went on their yacht. And he's a Hollywood insider now, which sucks because. What a cunt. <laughs> what a fucking <laughs> bug eyed cunt. <laughs> Fuck what? you. Oh you heard goodness. me. Wait, hold Fuck on, off. Steve. Steve, why, how, did, did Howard 101 cross over to our channel? What happened? Is that, <laughs> did they play that today? That's crazy. I didn't know that. That never happened. That ne well, well, Stern is... To Howard all the time. Well, he had therapy. He told us he's gone through exclusive, hey, extensive, ex extensive therapy that's fucking changed him. Jolly Green Giant with tits fucking sitting and criticizing me. In 2000, he went through this therapy and he'd never do things like he did before when he was you know interesting and fun and relevant <laughs> and crazy. But last year, after 19 years of intensive psychotherapy, that still exists in his body. So, you know, he's just a boy of 66 years old. I, I hope nuts right. get stuck in a zipper. Oh, <laughs> what, do, what is that supposed to mean, Howard? What do you mean by that? How do you uh -huh. mean? I'm not sucking your dick now, am I? It's a weird thing. I'm not even sure you have a dick. <laughs> I hope she doesn't have a dick. I don't know, man. <laughs> so, I mean, there's I'll, I'll bet 20 bucks she pees standing up. Again, I, well, so what is the Without insinuation death. there? That uh, she has a penis. Oh, that she's, <laughs> that she's, born, she's born a man. Yes, Correct. Yes, uh, yes. Okay, okay. But but when he goes on with Terry Gross in CBS Sunday Morning with Harry Smith. I would never. It's 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 all it that pathetic shit book that he spent months peddling on your fucking network series. You're paying this guy to do that, you dummies. He's, he's, he's peddling this stupid book and telling you how much he's changed and evolved. He's fucking full of shit. He's a bullshit artist, top to bottom. And he's done a magnificent job of getting people to believe. I'll defend uh, Kevin Clancy again here, where uh, I saw him tweeting like it's amazing. Howard Stern kind of just got away with this. What a lot of people don't know if you li if you listen to Stern's 
apology or response or whatever mm-hmm. you want to call that, you would just have no idea that he has lied. The way he lies is done in such a way that it fools some people. If unless you're listening real closely, well, he's been he's been bailed out by his relevance now. I guess so. Like in yeah. a weird and by way. The way. I own everything I did. Everything I did. Like what? Can you give any examples, Howard? No? Okay. You know, it's just, it, it, was, it was a pathetic apology, a low moment for Stern. And if I was serious, again, I would never, I, I, I am, you know, anti-cancel culture, unless you're an editor at Barstool. Uh, I am anti-cancel culture. But, you know, I would never say this. I would never tell my, my friends at Sirius to let Howard go ever, never, ever, ever. But if I was ever going to talk to him, I'd say, why don't you just talk it out? Why don't you just explain the situation, how things have changed, other than lying? Why don't you do what you built your career yeah. on doing? Instead of having a planted caller set you up with some script and then go from there. I mean, Howard, I can't believe what they're doing to you. Now, will this last, this show? Uh, What do you mean? Will Sirius pull this down because of Stern? I don't know. If this he finds a, out about it, yes. This is a freedom. I, they have to post it first. I don't know. The uh, on-demand feature hasn't been working very well for a oh, it week show. No. Oh, it we'll runs live. I mean, well, at 11 o'clock. Like right now, people are listening to us at whatever, 11.10 or something? Uh, yeah, I think they'll post it so quickly they won't have time to make any editorial judgments about it. Oh, but, if you're listening, grab the, grab the audio then. because <laughs> It'll, it, it'll so. never be out. Well, never I mean, hear it I'll again. have the audio. Presumably, Howard won't be able to hack into my hard drives. That's yeah, true. Be interesting. But, I know a lot of shows were not allowed to even say Howard's name for a year. So. Is that true? Oh, like Open Anthony, you mean? Yeah, uh, I, I don't think they were the only ones though. But yeah, you I mean, couldn't. Can, you definitely couldn't talk shit about how. Can you imagine, like people? You know, like, people just give me shit. Like, uh, imagine being like, "Hey, you can't say my name to like other <laughs> barstool shit." Like, what's crazy? <laughs> some, some just choose not to. But mm. exactly. true, what you get to. <laughs> but I mean, like that. that I, that's just cr- that's crazy, and it's everything he's railed against. Like you brought up Mike the other day. It's true. He's like you know, with opening Anthony's other shows, it's my 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 rules, my my free speech. My free speech. Yeah. Well, he doesn't give know. a shit about anyone else. And that is the. That segment and I, I, is it even on Stern's on demand channel? Is apology is that even up there? Though not the apology, I don't even know what to call it. From the other day, it was up there a little bit clipped, and then I oh, found okay. it, I found it again on a later replay. So I think the entire thing is. Oh up there. Well, okay, go yeah. listen to it. And Stern talks about how he's evolved, and which is bullshit. I mean, we can play the Asian sound, we can play the other sound. I mean, in two thousand eight, two thousand nine, again, this is a, it's a comedy show. Gilbert Gottfried and and Artie were calling the president of the United States the N word. Right. You know, I mean, on Stern's show, which you know he controls, and they had. They had the 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 Dolly Parton bits. Do you have that, Steve? They had, so you know they would do this thing, and again, I individually have no problem with it. But when Stern fucking lies, that's my issue. So they would have these audio books, and they would clip the audio books. You know what I'm talking about? Yeah. So they would have and Dolly Parton. Sound like they're saying Dolly Parton th- threatened to sue Stern. This is like <laughs> this is post 2000, by the way. Just saying, this is serious radio Stern. Wait, no, no, no. He was in therapy. That's true. Yeah, he was only he was only eight <laughs> years in. Right. He was only eight years into intensive psychotherapy, so we hadn't quite figured out who he was yet. And you know, uh, but do we have that or no? Yeah. All right, so this is so again. This is not actually Dolly Parton saying this. They are editing and putting this together. I'll tell you what, I'm reading the book. <laughs> I'm going to read it and listen to it. <laughs> but that Kenny Rogers uh, shit and little boys assholes. That's more embarrassing than the tummy tuck stuff. Kenny Rogers loves to piss inside little boys' assholes. Oh, piss. <laughs> piss. I'm wow. sorry, I threw shit. <laughs> shit would be disgusting. And she said some terrible things about Johnny Carson, uh, who was uh, considered an American icon. Right. Johnny Carson had a dark black cock that hung down to his knees, and he used to... To whip the young boys in the face while Burt Reynolds would suck their skinny little assholes. Right. So it's just, odd that so she just, sued him for that, so though. Stuff like that. Because no one well, would think that's real. I don't know, but I think she was older and, like, confused. and uh, She didn't actually sue him. Oh, okay. I think, is there an N-word in there or no? I yeah, mean, we don't have yeah. to play it. We don't have to play it. No, we don't have to play it. But I'm just saying, so one of those sounds is They that. make him say the N-word. Right. Make her say the N-word. Right, which, yeah. again, like, of course is absurd. And as I would say, and I, like I said this on, on the podcast, I'll say now, like, Stern was being satirical. Right. He was being satirical 25 years ago, 15 years ago. Fine. I completely, the Ted Danson thing, he's making fun of Ted Danson. Right. And you can say that. You can say that t- times have changed. I would never do that now. Which he said, just say that. And say, we did it all the time. We said the word all the time. We did it to show how stupid and absurd it was. Or we just did it because we thought it was funny. And now we've changed. But he won't do that. And he lives in, in such an insane bubble that it won't happen. That's the 2008 example. Wendy Williams was last year. The Asian stereotype voices this year. Again, do them. I don't care. You know, doesn't matter to me. But don't pretend you're this thoughtful, you know, uh, 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 you know, changed man when you're not. Right. Well, the, o- the only problem with anything he said Monday is the fact that he went on the View and said, "No, it was Daniel Carver. It wasn't me." 
Well, but, what did he say on Monday? Well, yeah. Yeah, but no, but the thing about it's like psychotherapy in involved. That's not yeah. true. We yeah, have sounded shows it's not true. But it's I wouldn't true. have a huge. He has changed. He, he has, doesn't but, do as much of that stuff. Okay, so but, that on its own, I don't have a huge but problem has, with but, if he doesn't go on the view. But has he changed or is the Wendy Williams thing real? Is he pretending yeah. the whole time? Yeah, you're right. And he I don't is, listen enough. Pretending. I don't listen enough. I don't know. You know, I, he gets paid a lot of money. I'm sure there are a lot of people listen to it still great. He's the greatest. He'll get, I mean, if, you know, he's the greatest radio personality of all time. He still has that in him, but that's not who he is as a broadcaster That's not who he wants anymore. to be there. And yeah, and that's he wants to have on the, fine, the fucking guy from SNL who was the show at 1230. And, Seth Myers. Yeah, yeah. kiss his ass and then have Trevor Noah on and then have Amy Schumer on. And then, and that's great. I mean, not great, but if that's what he chooses to do, fine. I mean, life goes on. Like, I, I you know, I told the story the other day. Like, I, 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 le- I found Stern from Channel, that Channel 9 show. I was a junior in high school. Uh, I was at Emily Dontremont's house. Like I said, I was with Andy Nolan. And I think Brian Manette, maybe Sean Oliver. Wow, the whole crew was there. The whole gang was there. <laughs> and I'm telling you, it was like, it was for me when I hear, uh, you know, Bruce and all these guys talk about seeing the Beatles and Ed Sullivan. Right. Like a light went off in my head. I was like, oh my God, this is, I, I want to do, like I, I can maybe do this. Like I, this guy, I, you know, this, when I, like I want to do this. And I always secretly wanted to do it. And I never thought I could really do it. But I saw that, and then I started listening to the show. It came to Boston, started nights at WBCN, the late, great WBCN. He'd be on at night. It's like he started at 7, and, you know, I would drive around the car. You know, I'd drive around the cul-de-sac. I'd go around just just listening to him for yeah. an hour at a time, having these crazy fights. I didn't care about the strippers. I didn't care about any of that bullshit. I didn't care really about the interviews. Oh, the interviews were good back then. I just liked the way the show became a universe, and I will cop completely. Uh, to Stern being a massive influence. I'm ne- I'll never apologize for that ever. It's crazy. Like, you know, it's it, for anybody who does that is insane. I mean, he's he's birthed all of this. And to see that now, that to me on Mon- Monday yeah. was such a low. I was just like, this guy, he's gone. He's fucking gone. We've lost him. He's with the gods. Is, what'd they say when Lincoln died, Steve? He belongs uh, to the gods now? He belongs to history, I thought. No, what's the quote? You should know the this. The Stanton quote? Yeah. Yeah, now he belongs to the ages. There we go. Now he belongs to the ages. That's what I say to Stern. Now he belongs to the ages. Yeah. A wonderful run, an unprecedented run, the greatest run in the history of radio. And everyone will, as much as he tries to change, everyone's going to remember, remember him that. as the shock jock guy. So it, it doesn't do him any good. So I don't know why it doesn't just because it makes him feel it makes it, him feel better. Like he can that's nice. I guess. He can go out to dinner with Jennifer Aniston, and you know he can pink. dance with Ellen. Yeah, he can dance with Ellen, and Ellen. I mean, you know. <laughs> Another yeah, two-face. You want to you want to <laughs> go back to some of the stuff that Stern Stern said about. I mean, like not just about her and a community in which she is part of. Right. I mean, again, fine. It was a show. I I don't care. But I mean, like this, it's just such hypocrisy all over the place. And they all, and we said he's not going to get. And I don't want him to get in any trouble. Sort of. Although I hate he, how phony he's being about it. But he'll get. It's been two days now. Gone. Over. Done. Yeah. It's just totally weird to, done. to watch a guy who built the idea of trashing someone who does that kind of a show now revert back to doing that kind of a show where you ignore stuff and give these fake apologies and excuses. And they act all surprised. Like, oh, oh, we're talking about this now with the caller? Oh, yeah. Everything's <laughs> staged and produced and fake and phony. And, you know, maybe, maybe he's happier. You know, I doubt it, but maybe I know, he's, he's going to be sad that he's not in more trouble. Because he's so irrelevant now that his treble can't last more than a week. It's like what you say about being a safe landing spot. That probably does bug, bug him on some level. I don't know, but I mean, like, you know. But he likes it. Yeah, Hillary Clinton will go there now. Like, <laughs> she knows she's not going to be asked about Epstein. She's not going to be asked about Lewinsky. She's not going to be asked about... Foster. Vince Foster. She's not going to be asked about the emails. Even their idea of what they did that was edgy. Like, I forgot the to lesbian. mention it the other day, but um, uh, Robin's example of Howard being edgy in the past... Was he did some right oh. said Fred? Parody? Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. And I, was oh, I thought like, you were talking about the Hillary when they kind of joked around. Though she said that people said she was a lesbian. I thought she brought that, that up though. She did. She did. Yeah. She was. She was much edgier than he was. She was. <laughs> yeah. Honestly, in the interview, he was like he was treating her like. Remember, he said she's a hero and a oh, goddess. God. And it's just like, I mean, you have Ruth Bader Ginsburg on now, who would be sitting there literally drooling. They'd say, what an inspiration you are. And I think about you all the time and all the wonderful things you've done. No, your and, workout t- routine. Ruth. Your yoga is unbelievable. You know, it's just and this is. Again, play some of the the real Stern, Steve. Go ahead. Such an innovator, though. She's known for being a huge innovator in the business. You have no idea. She's so brilliant. Who's who's he talking about? Wendy. She's an amazing innovator. Oh, okay. Yeah, there you go. She's done so much. What has she done, actually? I don't even know. Who the hell saying she's an innovator? 
I don't think anybody. It's a talk show host. Next right? time you eat a fly, I hope you choke on it. <laughs> That's kind of funny. frog looking. That's not so funny. <laughs> well, I've had it with her. <laughs> you know what? You know. I mean, we all know why he's that upset, though. Because it's true. Because she yeah. called him yeah. out. Yeah, she should go. That's something that's he, that yeah, he Hampton's Howie. Yeah. You know, Howie Hampton. I don't so even talk about how you look like a fucking Boston Terrier, do I? <laughs> <laughs> Motherfucker. Fake I Fred laugh. <laughs> Fred really enjoyed it. Just really laughing it up. But, I mean, you know, so it's, for me, it's how far in are we, Steve? Uh, 19 minutes. We're 19 minutes in. Just It's just sort of it's depressing. I, I mean, you know, I don't know really what else to say other than I mean, we, we, we've covered it. I just, I find it so interesting that there's absolutely no. We talked about why, and I don't want I don't want backlash. I don't want him to get in any trouble. I don't. He should do the show here on Sirius because it's you know it's fucking Howard Stern. But uh, um, you know when you have like I said, there Anderson Cooper's one of his uh, frequent guests or producers is one of the co-hosts of the wrap up show a couple of days a week. Yeah, and he has Rachel Maddow on, and he loves MSNBC, and he's fr- like the, you. you Put yourself in that cocoon where if Fox News writes about, oh, it's crazy Fox News. Yeah, they're just being bigots. So Fox News is writing about race and blackface and the one that everyone always says is racist, but they're covering the story. Yes. Yeah. Like, well, which is it? Like, you know, I I mean, and again, it's, is it a story? Yeah, it's a story. It's definitely a story. I mean, he's a big celebrity. This is what we do now. 